glad that you, you say that because that's what I hope comes across that it's that's it's just this the choice of style it's not set in any certain time it's interesting that uh, because I and you make an important point because um the songs that have survived, the songs in the Great American Songbook that have survived, are the songs that don't sound old. They're, and, yeah. and and especially when they're given a treatment that is as contemporary as anything that's out there. And I think about you know again some of the stuff that you've done. We, we were uh, if you if you've ever gone to our interview archive on our website, uh, if you go to martiniandmorning dot com, click on air. There was an interview with uh, Tony three years ago, probably at our old uh -huh. place, and. Um, it happened that I've been trying for weeks to set up an interview with uh, Jack Lawrence, who wrote oh, All right. or Nothing at All. Right, I remember that, yeah. And, and so out of the blue, in the middle of we got Tony sitting there. I think Aaron Bohem was in yeah. the studio, too. Yeah. And in the middle of it, Jack calls in on the telephone. It, 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 to make matters worse, our telephone system wasn't working. So I had to hold a microphone up to a right. speakerphone. But anyway, we had a great conversation. And in the middle of it, um, Jack was talking about one of, this, one of the great songs that he wrote, which is uh, uh, All or Nothing at All. And I played Tony's version of it, and Jack was like knocked out. He he said it was like he said it was like one of his uh, how did he put it? one of his kids being born again or something like that or being being reborn. A anyway, it, mm -hmm. the way you do these songs, it's I mean you could do a song that's eighty years old and it sounds like it's contemporary. Well, th well, th I mean that's well. When I go to record a song, I think why am I recording the song? Is is am I going to add something that's uniquely me to it or something that's at least different enough from how it's been presented that it that it'll make sense to for people to spend three or four minutes to listen to it that's that's kind of the test that i, I put a song through you know before i record it and the great thing too I, and again back to what i the original point to this thread as you'd call it on the internet uh the point to this was that the stuff that you that you're writing the contemporary stuff it all kind of feels cohesive it all feels you know, whether whether you're singing a new song that you've written or whether you're singing your your version of a, like a jack lawrence song that was written 70 or 80 years ago it has this very very cool contemporary right, sound thanks, one of the songs that really uh, uh feels that way tony Desaire's last first kiss martini in the morning.com tony Desaire, uh last everyone everyone is looking forward to that last first kiss it's martini in the morning.com that's title track from that album right it is yeah there's another great song on that album again another original um underscoring your uh writing skills the other song that was really great on that i thought was uh, uh let's just stay in oh yeah that's that, that that's been a really you know it's it's strange when i wrote that song the, the people at the record company they were like they wanted to cut it they, they, they didn't like the song they, they didn't get it think it was then it ended up being one of the you know, it, it, the song was in the Tooth Fairy movie with the the Rock and right. Ashley Judd, and it became something that that people came to see me to hear. You know, so it's just funny how songs can you know. And the record, uh, the record start label that way. No, they, 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 I had to fight to keep it on there. Hey, another song that that you have not recorded. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, well, tell me this, sir. I got to look you up here. You just reminded me of this. Um, and what's funny is I had. We've only played it a few times. It's a it's a pop song, and it's something that we, as a matter of course, probably wouldn't play. It's a cover of a of a big pop song, and you've done that before, by the way. You've mm -hmm. done like you did. Uh, was it the first album or the second album? You did a, a, a the Prince cover, Kiss. Yeah, 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 sure. And you also did. Um, what was the other one you did? A Carol King song. Yeah, I feel the earth move. Is that, I mean, you de see, whether it's a standard, like, uh, again, we'll take All or Nothing at All, which was very different from the way most people have done it. Right, so right. So you, you take Prince's Kiss and Carol King's I Feel the Earth Move. I mean, do you feel like, I mean, what are you doing to those songs when you do them? Well, the thing is, you know, the, the whole thinking behind it is, did the Great American Songbook really end in 1965? And, and I, I don't think so. So... You know, it's, to me, a good song is a good song. I mean, granted, it's a little harder to find songs that'll work um, in other styles because you know songs became started to become more about the arrangement and the beat than about the actual song. Right. But th there there are still good songs uh, that were that were written then, and I try to you know if I a lot of times I'll just hear something whether it's I'm out somewhere or or just hear something on the radio and think well that's you know may, maybe I could you know take just the lyric and melody out of that frame it the way I, the way I would want to do it and see how it comes out so that's that's how 
you know, it's, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it takes a lot of a lot of thought to try to do it justice because the the thing that I don't want to do and the, the thing that I'm always afraid to do when I, I pull a song like that is like to have it sound cheesy or have it sound like cruise shippy or something and like that's that. That's happened. You know? I mean, that, the sad the sad thing is that in in the '60s and even into the '70s, a lot of artists who were famous for Great American Songbook stuff were being asked by the record labels, "Okay, come on, let's hip it right. up." And they were doing some really cheesy cover. Yeah, I, mean, I, I know a couple artists in particular who were very unhappy that their label, instead of them doing what they did traditionally, the label right. wanted them to do cheesy covers of pop right. songs. And we we committed here not to play those songs because it, it was a disservice, I think, to the artist more than anybody else. Yeah. Is it science or art when you do that? Well, it's both because there's, there's a certain amount of craft involved in just musically being able to say, like, for example, the Prince song, Kiss, I mean, he only has three chords in the entire song and it works great. But in order to make it, to give movement to it um, in the style that I wanted to do it, which is swing, I had to add more chords, make it make it more interesting that way so it kept moving along. Otherwise, it would have just been really, it would have got boring because without that funky beat that Prince had. So so there's, in that part, there's, uh, there's a, a bit of craft in that it's, you know, you got to understand what chords you might be able to, to use and... Um, and then the you know the, the art of it is just making it sound cool. <laughs> Tony Desaire doing Prince's Kiss on my, I tried it at the beginning. I tried, it didn't come out as smooth as I wanted it to. Played a little tiny bit because you were talking about Prince's the kind of right. funky beat. Right. And uh, yeah, you had to do and and you did it. You you expanded the range of the song sort of you know. Yeah. Well, the thing is that you know songs pop songs have hooks of course. So you know part of the a big part of the Prince song. Is the is the beat and the right? Uh, uh. So all that. So putting it into a different genre, it's like you need to come up with new hooks. So right. so the first hook is the is the bass line, mm-hmm. which is completely different than Prince, but it, it's 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 a hook of you know boom, go 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 go. So it's things like that, like trying to it's it's reinventing the song to a certain extent, sure. you know, sure. to to keep it catchy and interesting. Did you hear from Prince? No, but I do. Sadly, I do know he doesn't like when people cover his songs. Really? Yeah. Well, he, stuff he, he thinks it should be illegal for people to cover songs. Really? You know, so. it's, but it's interesting because you you went back back to something you said a minute ago that you you don't feel the, that the Great American Songbook necessarily ended at a certain point in time. Right. And uh, and we we were just talking about this uh, a couple of weeks ago. In fact, I wrote about it in the newsletter. Um, uh, I was introducing Paul Williams at a show years ago, and, uh, and and when I introduced him, I said that if the Great American Songbook had a, a new chapter, that writers and I used Paul Williams, of course, as an example, and I said, you know, Burt Backrack and Hal David and yeah. uh, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, right. and and, um, and I said they would certainly be part of the next chapter of the Great American Songbook. And what was interesting was that after the re- this is the reason we've been talking about it, uh, right after the show, this gentleman walked up to me and he said I would really I like that idea I really would like my songs to be included in, the, in Great American Songbook chapter 2 yeah. and I said oh I'm, I'm Brad you are Hal David Oh yeah, and uh, and we ju- we were just reminiscing about that. Some some other friends that were at the show because uh, of course because of his, of his passing. But you're right. I mean there there are there are certain songs, and what you did with Prince's Kiss proves mm-hmm. that you can take. Mm-hmm. And and it's not true of all songs. I mean, to be right. honest with you, when I hear "Bridge Over Troubled Water," I want to hear it by Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. There are certain songs that, right. that, that are that that singer songwriter jag. You know? Yeah. But but what you did, uh, there's another song that you did, which is closer to the original, and you mm-hmm. never released the song, and we stole it off your iPod last since uh, Dan off the air. Danielle, our newsletter editor, was asking Tony what's on his iPod, which and you can find that when the uh, interview comes out in our next newsletter. But um, uh, we you made the Mistake, you made the mistake of let, letting Al the engineer uh, listen to your iPod, and so we ended up with this song. We played it a couple of times, and and we got a request recently for it. Uh-huh. And the request was from a fellow in Glens Falls, New York, and his name yeah. is John Desaire. Oh yeah, I know him. You know, him? <laughs> yeah, I know him. Yeah, and this is the song he requested. And again, this is closer to the original, and it's a little more pop than what we would normally do. Mm-hmm. But it just shows off Tony's uh, uh, Tony's style and his. Uh, uh, Amazing talent. Tony DeSera, martiniinthemorning.com. Never uh, released 
actually stolen off uh, Tony's. Uh, actually, it wasn't off your iPod. It was on a flash drive. Yeah, a little yeah. thumb drive. Yeah, he, yeah. He made the mistake of letting Al have his thumb drive. And, yeah. You know, we got uh, it's okay. I'm, I'm glad glad people can hear it. That's great because I, I I liked it and the you know the record company just thought doing the Marvin Gaye was too risky with the critics and didn't want to didn't want to take the chance. And, I mean, it is one of those iconic songs. It's yeah. like it's like when somebody takes on let's say uh, Sinatra's "One for My Baby." It's like it better be good. It better be right. different. And uh, you know, it's like like you said earlier. What can I can yeah. I add something new or yeah. different to this song? Um, you it's funny now, now having. Having Danielle, who's n- like never been around the music business, she's a she, you know, journalism uh, has a j- journalism degree, and you know that's her expertise, and she's good at editing our newsletter. But it's interesting the questions that sh- that she asks, not being around the the business, like uh, about you know whether you cook. I mean, th- some right. interesting questions. They'll show up in our uh, interview in our email newsletter, notes from a cocktail napkin. Uh, Tony Desir tonight at uh, Vitello's in Studio City, California. Excited about that, and one yeah. of your. Uh, 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 actually, uh, somebody that we've had in the studio before, I understand, is going to be in the audience tonight. Um, uh, Rachel McFarland is going to be at your show. Do you know Rachel? Oh, yeah. You know, I haven't met her yet, but we, we have the same manager, so I certainly know all about her. Haley, uh, her album Haley Sings out tomorrow, and uh, we had her in the studio a while back. And actually, she d- does a little bit of what you do mm-hmm. in taking songs of a, a certain genre and doing them a little differently. We, mm-hmm. And it's... Uh, it was interesting listening to uh, long before the album came out, getting a chance to listen to some of the music. Just fascinating the way young this new generation is taking not only the traditional Great American Songbook songs, but also taking again like what you did with uh, with Prince's Kiss and mm-hmm. uh, and just doing something totally different with them. It's mm-hmm. is that is I mean is it fun being able to create something, take something that's I don't mean to say old. But to take something that's been done a certain way that people are used to hearing a certain way, is it fun to... Oh, absolutely. Well, it's, and the, the thing that is even more fun about songs that, are, that were done, you know, maybe in the 70s, 80s, is that <clears throat> unlike a song like As Time Goes By, where you, you can look and there's 80 different versions of right. it, you know, of Kiss, there, I mean, nobody's really done much with it. I mean, Tom Jones covered it, but, you know, as far as... In uh, on my side of the fence of the genre, nobody touched it, so that, so it's wide. Open, you know. Th- there's th- th- you, you you don't. I mean, as time goes by, has been done as a swing, as a ballad, as a bossa nova, as, sure. you know, just any way you could think of. So it's harder for those songs, as great as they are to add something new recording wise I mean live is different because people love to hear the song and you can kind of just get away with just doing an honest read of the song but if you're going to put something down on recording you know this should be a statement about the song something new and, and it's it's it, it can be a little bit easier to do with songs that haven't been touched as much you are in Studio City tonight at Vitello's mm-hmm. tomorrow night you're in Boston Thursday yeah Thursday, oh, Thursday. I'll be in, Thursday I'll be in Boston at the Regatta Bar yeah okay I get the dates wrong uh, and then, then you're on to you've got a big show coming up in New York soon. Yeah, I these shows are to, to preview my new show in New York, which opens October second at a new club called Fifty Four Below, which is in the lower level of the old Studio Fifty Four. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I wondered. I, I was trying to figure out the the, the, the meaning. Yeah, that's yeah. that that's what it is. It used to be the VIP lounge area of Studio Fifty Four, and now it's uh, New York's newest nightclub. You sent me an email the other day uh, with a preview. You've got a, a preview of your. Where is it? Hang on a second. Um, trying to find it. You sent me a, a link to a YouTube yeah. cut. Yeah. What? What's so? This is from the new album you're working on. Yeah. The the new album now. The the cut I sent you is the most like pop single that's on that album. But I, I recorded an entire album all using an acoustic piano. Um, and the, the the video really illustrates that better than describing it. But basically, every sound on the album except my voice was made on on an acoustic piano. So you know, if, but it's orchestrated like it's a band uh, playing or an orchestra playing. So you know, I reached inside and strummed the strings. I smacked the side of it. I hit it. I hit the piano with marimba mallets. Um, whatever I you know, whatever I could to kind of get the sound to something musical i'm gonna try i'm gonna try something i've never done this before i've 
you know, I've had an artist come in with a like, yeah. like a thumb drive. I've had an artist yeah. come in with an iPod. I've never tried to play something off YouTube. I don't know what the quality is going to be like. Do you mind? Go ahead. What's the name of the song? It's called A Lot to Say. Tony Desaire. Uh, <laughs> Martini in the morning.com playing it from YouTube. I've never done that before. It didn't sound bad. Uh, Al the Engineer will probably come and tell me. Don't ever do that again. Um, it, and the, the name of the album? It, well, I think the name of it is going to be A, a, a Lot to Say. I Lots to say. That's, that, 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 that's the working title right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, and in our one of the things that, that we'll, we'll ask Tony in the uh, interview that you'll see on our uh, uh, in our email newsletter, uh, you won't actually see the interview. You'll link to it from the email newsletter when it comes out. But uh, we talk a little bit about some of the Great American Songbook stuff. But man, I, I'll tell you something: the the the, the pop stuff <laughs> that you've done, the the originals, um, they just you know it's it's funny that you can do something that's totally totally new. And has a more of a pop leaning, and then put it right next to a song from the you know traditional Great American Songbook, and it works. Yeah, well, that that was the thing, you know. In this album too, I was, you know, because I with so many new things I was doing, you know, putting it all, d- doing it all on piano, um, and then the the guy who mixed it, who's this uh, big time music in- industry guy, David Kahn, who's who's produced Paul McCartney, Tony Bennett, but also produced Sublime and Sugar Ray and Kelly Clarkson. You know, I as we were mixing. I mean, I've got that. I've got my funny Valentine. I've got all the things you are. I've got uh, faithfully by Journey. You give up a bad name from Bon Jovi. So all these different songs. And I said, does it bother you that they're so different in between? He said, he said it. He said normally it could, but he said the thing is your voice is consistent through the whole thing, and that's the common thread. And he said, kind of like, and and I'm not. I'm not comparing myself to the Beatles, but what he said is like the Beatles, they could do like, you know, on the white album that they could go from like a swing, something like that. And you didn't mind because it's, you knew it was always the Beatles. Right. And he said, that's how I feel about your stuff. It's like, you know, it's always you. It's not like you're, you're changing who you are. You're just, you know, the, the styles change, but that's, but, the, but it's not, not changing how I'm singing. Right. Again, your style mm-hmm. is really the prevailing uh, yeah. uh, theme for the album. Right. Um, speaking of the Beatles, uh, this is a couple of year, uh, year and a half, two years ago. I got so I, I'm I'm at home uh, late at night on a Sunday night, and I get a text from some of our listeners, uh, Ed and uh, oh, I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm going to forget his wife's name. They've been to the studio too, Sandy. I, yeah, Ed, yeah, Ed and Sandy from uh, uh, Alabama. Yeah, uh, and they uh, they happen to be in New York, and and they'd heard us talking about you playing at uh, Bemelman's Bar at the at the Carlisle. Mm-hmm. And uh, they went to see you, and Ed texts me, and said, "Ed Sweeney, uh, yeah. Ed texts me, and he said, you 'You're not going to believe this. Paul McCartney just came in, sat down at the table next to us, and uh, and then you and I talked about it the yeah. next day. So what, what? I mean, one you know, singer and songwriter to another. How how was that? Well, it was. I mean, it's it was an amazing experience for sure. I mean, we were just we had already started our our set and was in the middle of playing a song and and i didn't even see him walk in my guitarist ed saw him what saw him walk in and so i'm playing in the middle of the song and and at the carlisle it's it's very close quarters so right. that my band is right behind me right so ed leans over and in my ear he, he says paul mccartney just walked in yeah. <laughs> so i look over and there he is he sees there's paul mccartney sitting right there like just you know just as far as uh, miriam is from from me right now and just just like 15 feet away so you know i I thought uh all right what do i do now like all right just be just stay cool be cool (laughs) finish the song like you know just so i started to think what i should play you know should i just be like hey jude (laughs) like no I, i better not do that um so then but that's when i thought you know i'm gonna start playing some, I mean, because it's an opportunity. The, the greatest living singer or singer songwriter was sitting right there. Right. So I started to, to play a lot of my original songs, and he really. What was so cool is he was so engaged with what we were doing and right. with the songs, and and I remember when I played "How I Will Say I Love You" for him. I watched. I'd look over him, and he'd like react. Like he could he was listening to the lines and my, my lyrics because I'd say say something, you know, sing the blues, I'll listen intently. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, he, can make, he made that Paul McCartney face, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know, all, all those. So the words he was really processing and it was just great to have that type of audience from him, you know, like because he, he could have just sat there and talked to his date who's now his, his wife, but he could have just ignored me. But It's interesting too because when we first, the first 
preview we got of his uh, Kisses on the Bottom album, his first run at the Great American Songbook. Uh, and he, um, there are two songs on the album, two originals on the album. Uh, My Valentine is one of them, one he did with Eric Clapton. Um, but there was another song, and I was sitting there with some other industry uh, folks in, in, a, in a bunker below Beverly Hills because they it was like so secretive this whole project and uh, uh, and they they came to this one song um, uh, only our hearts will know and it's like we're all scrambling to look at the liner notes thinking is this a standard that we you know that we didn't know about and we're so we're, you know flipping through it and it was written and he wrote it and mm-hmm. um, it was interesting because it felt like and you and I've been talking about this about songs that fit even though they're, it was, it's a very contemporary song. but And in fact, it, vocally, it's interesting, you, you're saying Hey Jude. It sounded a little, uh, not Hey Jude, it sounded a little like the, his vocals on Long and Winding Road. Very oh, yeah. similar feel to, to that song. But it, it, the sense was, and the people from the, the his company, the record company, didn't dispute it, but it felt like he was trying to write in a way that is compatible and that would flow nicely with Great American Songbook tunes. And I want, and I speculated, Mm-hmm. That, that he may he might have been doing more than just coming out to see you. He might have been doing a little research when he came to see you that mm-hmm. night. And so it was very wise of you to play your original stuff. Ah. Well, I I thought maybe he was, you know, because there was the kind of word on the street was that he was going to do a standards yeah. album, yeah. and you know we thought maybe he's just going around town seeing who's playing, kind of to get ideas. You know, that's, that's what is what we what we thought. I mean, that, that's interesting to think that maybe he was thinking about how to position a new song. Right. Along with the old songs, that would be, uh, you know, and it was a good, and it was a very good fit, and you could, uh, you could, you know, add one plus one and come up with how I will say I love you. <laughs> Tony DeSera on Martini in the Morning dot com. Martini in the Morning dot com, and that's exactly how I'll say I love you. It's Martini in the Morning, Tony DeSera. That song. Okay, so we got a little controversy going on here because. Um, uh, our newsletter editor Danielle uh, came in from Tennessee. Actually, she lied. She said she came in for the Susan G. Komen Orange County Race for the Cure, but given her fundraising uh, total, uh-huh. we know that she wasn't. Uh, she really came to see you. Mm-hmm. She's never been to a club show before, uh-huh. uh, and uh, and so her, she just she was just asking about the set list, and she asked if you're doing that song tonight. Yeah, and you're not. Well, so you know, either you're gonna have to add it to the set list, or you're gonna have to take her out in the parking lot and sing it to her. It, it, either one, either one. I could do. Well, see the see the thing is, is to, tonight it's, it's a basically an all new show. Right. Um, at least you know New York. My last show that that was a big you know New York Times reviewed show was was three years ago now. So um, that's and, a big deal in New York. Yeah. I mean, I mean, doing it's almost like launching a Broadway show. Yeah, it's a, it's like a mini Broadway show because it runs for two weeks. I've got five shows a week. So, um, you know, so you want to present something new, you know, right. and, and it's really, you know, the, the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and all, all those guys come Daily in and they, news. They, and they review it. And, and uh, I mentioned the Daily News because one of their editors is listening right now. Oh, and Daily News. We I, don't I, 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 I hope that they come. Yeah. <laughs> please come if you're listening. Why not? Come come to the show. Um, so uh, the reason I, I'm not doing it tonight is just because uh, uh, I've done it in New York before. And, and it's, a you know, the idea is that it's a new show. I mean, I've. I've been doing a few of the songs tonight that I've, I've I've actually been performing out around the country for a couple of years, but I haven't premiered them in New York. So that's a, I mean, it's funny because it's, it's a different environment in New York than from here. I mean, uh, New York is very uh, club centric, if you will. Yeah, and 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 here it's a whole different thing because it's like when you go home in New York. I remember when I was working on some projects out there. You know get off work and you somebody yeah. say hey let's go get something to eat maybe go see a show and yeah you know and you you wander down to the, the when it was still open the uh was it oak room yeah yeah which yeah. is gone now I yeah, yeah unfortunately it's gone yeah. yeah and another another iconic club I, is it public that another iconic club in new york's closing feinstein's yeah it's closing at the end of the year yeah yeah, yeah so but but still it's still a very club centric uh uh music scene and la it's like you know you you get in your car, you drive home, and then you say, "Do I really want to drive back into Hollywood?" You know, mm-hmm. or Studio City. Um, so it's a di- it's a it's a much different environment, and and I, and and those premieres and doing something new and something fresh and getting a good review is pretty critical. So do you, is it like Broadway where you stay up late at night and wait for the review? Um, I I'm sure some people do. I'm yeah, you know. I, I'm not going to do that, but <laughs> and, and but here t- uh, tonight, so uh, so mostly new stuff. Yeah, it, it'll be mostly new stuff, uh, cool. stuff from the new album. Um, Probably uh, most. I mean, as far as 
as far as what the listeners have heard, I mean, I, I, just about everything's new because the songs that I've been doing, um, like New Orleans Tango's on my new CD. I, I've, I actually wrote that two years ago, but I've been, you know, doing it on the road, um, and that's on the new CD. But that's that's not something that's officially out yet. So. So it's, in at essence, an all-new show, yeah. Very cool. Tony DeSera on Martini in the morning.com. Oh, and for the show in New York, uh, one of our New York listeners, Adrian DeRoss, uh, was asking, what, you know, what, what's the band like? What, you know, who do you have playing with you? Yeah, f- f- 54 Below, I've got uh, drums, bass, guitar, and me, uh, piano, uh, playing piano and singing. Uh, the, the, the club is beautiful. It's, it's all new. It just opened in June. The first act was uh, Patti Lapone. And... Um, I'm there October 2nd through the 13th. Um, it, from my website, you, you can easily uh, get links to uh, getting tickets. And it's not as expensive as like the Carlisle and, and Feinstein's and the, and the Okramar. It's, it's, more, it's priced more like a, like a jazz club. And it's, it tickets are 30 to 40, and uh, um, they, yeah. they, they have dinner there, too. It's, it, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be nice. Yeah, the Carlisle can be pretty spendy. Yes. Carlisle, you, you can't get out of the Carlisle for... You know, for for two for two people, if you have a full meal and a show, and a couple of drinks, you're you're looking at like four hundred bucks. I remember when I got the bill, I had uh, m- well more martinis than I should have. The last time I was at the Carlisle, uh, and then I tried to walk back to my hotel, which was at Seventh and Fifty Third. Oh, why? How could you walk? That's a long walk. Yeah, I finally figured that yeah. out and gave it up. Well, I just thought being out in the cold air, you know, Chris yeah. would, would wake me up. And but anyway. Uh, I think I think a martini was like twenty two dollars. Oh yeah, you know, and, and I think and I think you know paying twelve at a club here is expensive, but um, I'm a tight one. Um, so tonight uh, at uh, Vitello's in Studio City, California, Tony Desaire mm-hmm. and uh, um, maybe in the encore. Yeah, well, look if 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 you guys are yelling for it, I'll do it. Uh, and then tomorrow uh, Thursday night in Boston, and then the new album out when the, the well the. As soon as possible, it's done. It's finally done. It, it was finished in August. So, if there's uh, a Tony Desir song that we should have played today and didn't, what should it be? Um, naturally, you're gonna pick something we don't have on the computer. But go ahead. Yeah, I don't I'll know. Take well, that what, chance. Do you, what do you got there? I got most of your. I have most of your music. I don't have. Uh, I, I was just looking for uh, my date with Drew. I finally saw the movie. Oh, you did? Yeah, it took yeah. me. A, you know, we've talked about it ten yeah. million times. Yeah. And, there's a movie. It was a quasi documentary, right? About a friend of yours. Yeah, and he'll be there tonight at the show. Actually. Oh, how cool! Yeah, he was there the first time we saw you at yeah. uh, Catalina. Yeah. Um, and and ironically, one of our weekend presenters, we call them, they're they're, they're classier than a disc jockey like me. Uh, uh, Kitty Collins was on. It uh, was in the movie. She was the disc jockey that they called oh, yeah. trying to find Drew Barrymore. Uh-huh. And uh, I think she's coming. Yeah, she's. I think she's coming tonight. Oh, and, great! Yeah, so that'll be fun to connect. Oh, yeah. Her. I, I don't. I'm sure that they. He, she actually never met Brian. I, I mean, I, I don't think she did. So how cool! Yeah. So the movie. The premise of the movie was. Well, okay. Uh, this guy, Brian Hertzlinger, uh, who's who's now a film director. He's done the Tonight Show a bunch of times. Back back then, he was out of a job. Um, he he didn't know quite what he was g- going to do with his life and. Uh, he always loved Drew Barrymore. He was on a pilot game show where he won eleven hundred dollars, where the winning answer was Drew Barrymore. Ah. He took that as a sign that he should pursue his lifelong dream to meet her, and he's always had a huge crush on her. And um, so, he and two of his friends that they went to Circuit City, got a camera with a thirty-day return policy. I remember that. That was yeah. very, very funny. And started the, the quest of trying to ask her out on a date to see if she would go and and uh, you know they didn't know what would happen and you know so th- they went through this whole journey and cut together a film of the whole thing and then it started winning film festivals it got all this buzz in, in Hollywood nobody knew exactly what to do with the, the movie but it got all this you know ev- everyone in the industry that saw it loved it so it eventually ended up getting a theatrical release in uh, 10 cities here in the US came out all over the world and now it's you know it's on Netflix now and it's they they play it on Showtime all the time and and I've I've got the theme song. Something I've never told you before. So the reason I don't have it in the computer and I and I keep meaning to remedy this, but so when I got your Want You album, your debut right. album, that song was on. Yeah. And I didn't really listen to the song, but I looked at the title. Yeah. And the first thing I thought was it was about you dating some guy named Drew. Some guy named Drew. 
<laughs> yeah, well, that's that's that, that's that would right. come as a real shock to your new wife. Yeah, that that would. Well, you know, it's funny though. I mean. Uh, I'm blushing because I've never. I, oh. I, I I I I always I thought about telling you before, and I nah. I'm not gonna tell. Yeah, well, I mean, it is. You know, the, the, that the song definitely needs an explanation because, you know, it's it's a strange, <laughs> it's a strange title. But the thing is, that's funny about that. I've gotten emails from people that have married people named Drew, both men and women, um, and they use the song at their wedding. You know, because they they discover it because it's you know it's a not a common name, and they they somehow find the song and. So it's actually have had has had other uses, similar probably uses to what you're thinking. They're just not not personal to me. <laughs> I told myself I was never going to tell you that story. That's all right. Tony it's, it's funny. That's funny. Tony DeSera and Martini in the morning. So pick a song, any song. What, uh, what's your favorite song of every? I mean, I know you said you don't have a favorite favorite song, but if you had to pick a song that, that you're most proud of, um, well, of course it's always what's what I'm working on now. You know, with, with any artist, but um. He's looking at a list of his songs just to refresh yeah. his memory. How many songs have you recorded? Well, uh, three albums. Three albums, uh, about twelve songs each one. And I've, I just had my fourth one, so um, forty-five, four, fifty yeah. songs. Yeah, I mean, and plus you know here and there, little, little tracks here and there for other other things. But um, you want me to scroll down? He hasn't found. He hasn't picked one yet. I haven't picked one yet. Yeah. When I get a throw a dart. And, Tony Desaire going through his songs on our computer. You know, I, you know the song that, that I don't really do, but I've always liked, um, and I, I wish that I did more, was uh, Lover's Lullaby. I, I was I was like that. It's it's kind of in the vein almost of How I'll Say I Love You, just maybe a little more bittersweet. I know you saw it. I don't yeah, see it's it yet. There. Lover's Lullaby. All right. Yeah. Tonight at uh, Vitello's in uh, Studio City, California, and uh, Thursday night in Boston mm -hmm. at, at Regatta Bar. Regatta Bar, and then New York. And then New York City. October 2nd to the 3rd.